2007 AFL Grand Final. Scott McLaren with the first bounce. And as predicted by his coach, he makes it a perfect one. Oh, and Rook came in hard at Roden, who didn't flinch. The Brownlow medalist shoveled it, then hand passed it. But the ball is still in dispute. West off's there. Took two to quell him. Geelong hold up. Ottens to Enright. Rook. And now Steve Johnson down in the back half. It is a test of nerve, isn't it, early on? Shannon Burns takes the mark. Good running from Chapman. Pounding down again, Nathan Ablett bolts to the goal square. And that's the target, Mooney as well. It's all set up for Cam, he can let it go, he takes it. So played on quick, they've got the ball in there, put the defence under pressure. First drive to the Cats. And you'll see the double lead back and the defence playing in front. It's still the percentage place to play for the defenders. But Mooney too good. Going with Treadray. I think that's a good matchup. Get him up. Again, Ottens and Brogan. So Port got both their big ruckmen deep in attack. Enright just bashing it on the boot and getting it clear. No free kick against Kelly. Then it could have been one against Burgon. Play on. Chapman, hasn't he been prominent so far? Mooney won out with Wakeland. Do you like that? Mooney takes the mark and he laid it off. Sell it on the ground. Normally has an impact. Mooney likes his chances. No, he disguised it beautifully. And Steve Johnson, another one who the Cats will be hoping gets up today. The two big guns have started superbly. Cut over Kelly, tap in the centre square, set it up. And there it is there. He knocked the ball two metres to keep it alive. Chapman got it, got the ball to Mooney. And Mooney, in turn, was able to set Steve Johnson up with a sly little kick. City tackle giving away a free kick. And it's Travis Boat. Harley on to Collins means Motlop has a new opponent. It looks like Hunt. That wasn't 15. The veteran laid with a cool head. Puts it in the right spot. Motlop's got it. Treadray's got it. Even he couldn't stand up in that tackle, but he was pushed. And he will line them up. Was that another Wojcinski free? Wojcinski gave the last one. It looks like he might have made Treadray earn it. No, I'm not looking. I know it's a free. I'm not looking. Let's have a look at it. And Wojcinski, a bit over anxious with his tackling, giving away two free kicks in the space of 30 seconds. Injuries. Average only one goal a game in the first half, two a game in the second. And he kicks Port's first goal of the grand final. Don't underestimate that kick. We know it wasn't far out, of course, but the pressure when you're under the pump, Geelong have got the ascendancy early to go back as captain and kick that goal just to steady your own team. Johnson, not that time. Kelly, well done by Chaplin and Thurston's, who, of course, kicked three goals right. in the grand final four years ago. Right. Surge with a turnover. Just too clever with yeah. the kick. We know he can do it. He, we know he can get that 9 out of 10. He had a bit of momentum up, a rush of blood. He's gone for the little banana kick on the side. It's his seventh touch, too. Oh, and again, there's a turnover. And Ablett, the little genius, drives it home. And that's the pressure. The pressure of the turnover on his toes. Intercepts that can really hurt teams and just being proactive intercepts it there. Well done, keeps the ball in front. More importantly, sets a great standard for the rest of your team.
You can't keep making mistakes back there and not be punished eventually. Well, two interceptions, Tim. The two interceptions, the oh, they are whipping it in so quickly. Players really haven't got a chance to settle. Yeah, they're dropping short consistently too. Not good enough. Getting in each other's way. Here's Burgoyne. The Panther strikes. A master at getting underneath and laid. We've seen that so many times. Eight to three, the clearances. Cameron Ling will be filthy on himself. That he again, left. Peter Burgoyne, Kane Corn, Sean Burgoyne. They're their stars, and they're all firing for Port. So that's the good news. The bad news is the Cats are running on top of the ground as well. Hunt for Rottens. Can't take a check. And it's has to make amends for the fall. And Steve Johnson can take it and make sure of it with his second. That was a bold kick into the middle of the ground and it paid off, thankfully for the Cats. But the square up here is really, really dangerous. But that's what they're playing with, attacking flair. The ball goes over the back, Chapman runs onto it. It's and Port thought they had it covered, but found the loose man. It's risk and reward football, uh, Vossi. The risk was high, but it came off. Yes, just a couple of minutes to go and the lead is 15. They would dearly not want to concede another one. Pettigrew, a man who can run. You can see he's quite confident. Striding out against Brad Ottens, but maybe overconfident. That, that is a victory. Decision. That is a victory of the highest order to he's see. going through his paces. He won the sprints. That's how quick he is. It was a terrible decision, though. He had options forward and decided to ignore them. Harley third in line here. Needed to hang on to that. But Geelong just not giving Port any rope. Sean Burgoyne, time here. But the smother came from King. Corey. No escape there, but was able to get it to Vachinsky. Ablett now. Well done by Geelong. Kelly, Selwood, sold it beautifully and sets up Bartell. Not a big goal kicker, but he's got one to go with that Brownlow. That is a big goal with just over a minute left. 22 points is a worrying break from Mark Williams' point of view. And just have a look at this. Watch this option coming up from Selwood. Does not rush. Borks takes his time. Gives it to Bartel. And on the left, if you don't mind, just what the Brownlow medalist ordered. Fantastic finish set up by Selwood with great decision-making. Great, great angle, angle from, from the, Great angle from, from the fly cam too. We can hear you, Rob. You want some company? Ling, Sean Burgoyne with him. Dodgy disposal. Harley, Port reversing the pressure here. Hunt to Corey and back to Hunt. Geelong hold up. And with the defensive answers at the moment, Rook, and as they cut right. through the middle of the ground, Corey Enright out for Little Stokes. Quick to give it off. Steve Johnson for his third. He's a star. Third goal of the game. His tenth disposal. Now Hunt was super coming out of the back line. And again we see them switch it into the corridor and the automatic play on. This is the Geelong style that we've seen in 2007. Stokes gets it across there to Johnson and he backs himself. Goal number three early in the second quarter. How have you seen King, Vossi? He's been good. I would have thought what you said before. Been worthwhile selection. Mackey been good too for Geelong. Oh, oh that was fancy. Day, it day, wasn't 15. Ling, oh, he was almost dead there. He's done well. Rooks a chance from inside. 50. Slapsy Maxi. It's almost a six-goal lead to Geelong. Port are in danger of being blown out of the water. And here it is, and there's Ling, and that's the difference. Just being able to keep your feet and get it to one of your teammates is just critical. If the ball falls away from him there, Port are away and attacking. Instead, they have a shot at goal.
And now, maybe a little lucky, in fact, a lot lucky. He actually fell over at the crucial stage off the scarlet. The How pressure many? keeps coming, not 15. Chapman will have to go. Round the neck. How many touches of Scarlett had? Scarlett is just running off his opponent, Westhoff. He's had eight touches. Westhoff's 50 metres. Important goal kicker for Geelong. Important figure in their team. And he stretches their lead, would you believe, to 41 points. Sometimes when mm. you drop your knees, four-year drought is not over yet but the signs are very good down at Geelong in fact on the wrong side we know he's good off the left what about off the right not quite but this is where Motluff does his best work he loves the little fake hey, in the dish but I think confused everybody in right danger certainly not passed for Geelong Bartel they're running Wojcicki safely to the wing and Maxwell can send them forward again through the corridor, did it beautifully. Mooney on the long lead, and Geelong are full of menace once more. Skirting Mooney as Selwood. Long probing ball for Nathan Ablett. Pushed, free kick. It's going to be another one. And the kid, young Ablett, needed this. He'd only had the one touch. He'd had one handball. And this will do his confidence the world of good. No doubt about that. Thurston's. Just meeting Ablett too solidly. What about the way Geelong cleared that ball from the goal square? So Nathan Ablett, his first kick of the day, is another Geelong goal. They lead by 47 points. Mark Williams needs some answers. It's only very early in this second term. Ablett to his feet quickly. Here they come. More destruction out of the middle. Sell with Nathan Ablett for two in a minute. That mark shows the talent of the kid. He's the mark of the century, of course. He kicked a point after that. I wonder what his son will do. He won't make the same mistake. It's beyond 50 now. Fantastic view of it here. It's been absolutely awesome watching this team. They are winning in every facet of the game at the moment and doing it with such power and precision. They look unstoppable. No for trouble. James! Where is he? Play on now. So port break here. Corns receiving and giving to Symes, who bombs it for Chad Corns and lovely clean pair of hands. Been 25 minutes since the grand final. They trail at half time, 68 to 28. Chad Corns kicks the goal. decision at the moment. Good zone by Geelong. Chad Corns to Thurston's to Cassisi. Symes, Thurston's again oh. and he's ready to look. Goal. And that is a deflator. It's 50, it's 50 minutes. It'll be a goal and that just rips the heart out of your football team. And have a look at the coach. Can't believe it. And the steely tackle just might be one of the reasons why Geelong were prepared to take Max Rook to Germany to have his hand of the body there. Chaplin to the wing. Westhoff finds himself well up the ground and only one target to go to. But opportunity now for Logan to take a mark with a Celepec kick. Got a cruel bounce that accommodates him eventually. And Port get their second of the quarter. Stay in the hunt. Bench find demand down the middle. Advantage paid. Stokes to the wing for Bartel. Symes his pursuer. Nathan Ablett lends a hand. Meantime, this is Burns. Courtney's wrong side, but somehow got out of it. 
have it. He still keeps on going. Burns. Holding the ball and he bounced Burns just when he had hanger. his jump attack. And terrific oh, chase oh. down by Port. And Unlucky. Surgeon. They've just got to get it on from here. They've got to be bold. And they've got a chance here. There's an opening. Pettigrew for Kane Corns, and the leads are coming. Dabbing it over the top. Boat, moon down. Corey wins the free. Scarlett now for Mackey. Trying to get some pressure on Scarlett, but he's so cool. Wachinski, Mackey again. Shed Corns couldn't reach it. Burns. Ablett, oh, getting rid of Surgeon, and Burns helping with the Shepherd. Oh, Surgeon oh, comes oh. back. Ablett disposed legitimately. Mooney, like a bull out of a paddock, to Kelly. Cleverly off the instep, that was glorious. And Chapman can run in and finish the job. That is eight goals, seven to one from turnovers, Wolsey. Yes, and Vossi, what about the strength oh. of Gary Ablett? Now, did he get the handball away? Port supporters reckon he didn't. The umpire said he got a little bit of a fist on the footy, and so he said play on. And, of course, uh, they finished off with the goal, but uh, Gary Ablett backed himself. Risk and reward, that's the football that these cats play. What I loved about that piece of play, keep your feet. Never give up on the tackle. As they did at the start of the game. At least Treadray has drawn Scarlett. Freeing up oh, West yeah. off. He yeah, has Milburn. Yeah, or Milburn has him. Rook, the first kick for Geelong. Can Port kick that first goal? They don't want to concede here. Chaplin in. Couldn't hold it. Kelly, stolen by Chad Corns, who with his brother and Peter Burgoyne have had 55 disposals. And yet the team is being hammered. Chad Corns brought down in a hammering tackle. Stokes, time to assess and deliver. Well, it was another tackle that caused the turnover. Cameron Mooney kicked the first goal of the game. Hasn't added to that since. That is a lovely kick. It is a beautiful kick. The Cats are going all the way. And again, the umpire is the one that gets him moving. Not his own decision. You can see why. There was nothing to go to. Mooney. Nathan Ablett calling for a deep. Johnson in the pocket. Good kick. They look after each other, the forwards. The forwards kick the forwards all the time. Here's another one. And this time he passes. Bartell. This is all happening. Steve Johnson gets uh, wax on the back, so they're all feeling very good about themselves. They're 5'8 from set shots today. Bartel taking more contested marks than any other midfielder in the competition. He really made the goal on pie work, but it's still worth six. And their record in the second half of the year, almost as good as the Cats. Milbourne. Hoping for Corey Harley. Oh, Chapman! Paul Chapman! He set himself, he could see it in first rate. Here's Paul Chapman, just a beautiful ride on Treadray. Classic the screamer. There it is. Yeah, Perfectly tell the kids about for sure. Ebert gets there late, but Harley gets there early. And again. The Geelong defence has been magnificent today. And Otten's an athletic big man in space below the MCC members. This is a moment to remember. The crowd's roar ringing in his ears as he has a four-bounce run to tell the grandchildren about. And Mooney is at the end of it. He got into the back. With the job of controlling him. King for Bartel. Oh, good hit. Got a bit to go on with. Wojcinski, Kelly, Mackey, Wojcinski again. Uninhibited through the middle of the MCG. Stokes, remarkable recovery early. And again, he's got a plethora of options. Goes for Ottens. And here's Steve Johnson again. So unselfish. Yeah, he is now. Nathan Ablett over the top, and it's Burns to finish it.
And there's the tackle in the middle of the ground, but it was then the Cats when they just swept it from defence. Their ball movement has been so proficient today. And Johnson just resisted the temptation to blaze away and fed it off. Almost fortunate in the end. <laughs> Cassisi giving it to Sean Burgoyne eventually. Chad Corns, Pierce. And placing it now, hoping for a tall forward. Brogan is there, Motlop is down, and Trent Ray waits and goals. To the one side, and that's where you'd think Thurston's would go. And he does. It is a contest, and it's won handsomely by Stephen King. And he gives it to Johnson, who, if he likes, can have another shot. He wastes no time. He sits it for Ottens, and he'll get a goal this time. He can kick that from between the posts. Well done to Stephen King, taking the mark. Acts of faith in these two big men for Geelong, as Ottens brings up the 100 for the Cats and puts them 71 points in front. Of course, uh, retiring at the end of last season. Yeah, but I, I just think Stephen King, we're just seeing there, he's, he's just having a, a massive influence on this game. Nathan Adler able to crash the pack. Corey out for Chapman. He's had a great day. They all have. Mark another one down for the Cats. The celebrations have begun. And there's no holding back. Well, Wolsey, Geelong are playing the second best team in the competition this year. And they are smashing them. Well, that's how good they are. It just shows how good they are. They've been the best team all year. Uh, a lot of people thought, well, Port Adelaide would give them a bit of a fright. I didn't, because I just thought that uh, they were just so far superior. And they've shown it. And boy, am I glad I know. <laughs> I, I guess I, I uh, differ a little bit in that. Um... Port Adelaide work it out. Peter Burgoyne swinging the kick, but Bartell covers it. And it just keeps bouncing back. Selwood need to be quick here, but Vachinsky is. Selwood again. And here's Nathan Ablett. We'll get a free kick. Selwood never yeah. wastes a kick. Always looks to put it to the Seen as perhaps a weaker link. Lines up for his third goal in a grand final. And he splits them. Point margin. Could be the most one-sided grand final in history. Surgeon, just a little stab. The umpires have been hard on the 15 metres today, but uh, that's paid to Pierce. Lovely kick. Oh, Chapman, big climb again to go the spoil. And Geelong have got it. Milburn, Mackey, just controlling this game with contemptuous ease, and the brown line medalist. What a week he's had. He goes for a run, and what exquisite weight on the kick to Selwood, who gives it to Mooney. That is typical Geelong football, and then the short pass to the leading forward. If you want to see Geelong play football, that passage sums it up. He's been demanding of his teammates in this quarter. Chance to kick another one. And extend the lead to Still on. Chad another go. And now Symes clears for Port Adelaide. Won't be easy for Tread Ray there though. This is Geelong brick wall, the extra man across half back. We've just seen it time and time again, haven't we? Scarlett, he'll be in contention when they put the votes in for the Norm Smith. This man will as well. He's done it in the air and he's done it in front of goal. He's got three to his name, Chapman. Oh, it's a big roast. Free kick. 
who was just about to go all the way. And Cam Mooney's going to get to his feet and become the first Geelong forward to four goals. Well, you can see Wakeland eyes off the ball. Definite free kick. The long kick by Chapman just puts pressure on the poor ten again. I'd be interested, Vossi, on your thoughts on who might win the Norm Smith medal. Here's Mooney. There's his fourth. And they're first in the last quarter. Chapman lines them up. He has three goals. He doesn't get a fourth here. But he might have set one up because Ling pops it through and the lead is in three figures. It is an unthinkable shellacking. An incredible celebration. The Cats have broken the drought. The power of being buried. If they've waited this long, they may as well make a good job of it. And that's what Geelong are doing. And Cameron Ling is the 10th goal kicker for his team. Had a ripper season, all Australian selection. Wholeheartedly the most. For Port, devastation. For Geelong, it's the moment in football where you just get to play football for fun. Nothing better, nothing sweeter. Play on, play on. Cane Of course, 10 of these Port players today have played in a flag. The Cats finding every which way to get it forward. Enright going deep. Chapman wants some more, and he's going to get some more. Long kick. Puts the defence under pressure. Bossy, you played in three premierships. Chapman kicks the goal. And the avalanche continues. You played in three premierships. When did you start enjoying it? Which which game did you know you had and at about what time? Well, comparative to this, and we certainly didn't win by this margin. It was against Collingwood in 2003. I never never relaxed for a moment in the first, but in 2003, when the margin blew out in the last quarter, in that last 15 minutes or 20 minutes of the game, you just really got to enjoy football. You got to enjoy it with your mates, what you're there to play for. And just the smiles on the faces that you, that you were shared with everyone it was just sensational. In fact, 15 of them have scored today. Surgeon, Boak, Burgoyne, and Boak again. Ebert. Trying to scrounge it, but again, just totally overwhelmed by the numbers. Mackey, Scarlett, surging forward again. He won't be able to kick a goal from there. They've got a couple down there. He can. With the Cats. Corey Enright caught one there. He protected Tom Harley and nearly died doing it. <laughs> Play on. Now Bartell. Ablett. He Play. can spot a couple of men loose. And who else? But Steve Johnson. He's not quite finished yet. Ablett. Mooney. And it is going to be Mooney. Who's already. Stay there. Don't stand in front of him, Steve. Was Steve Johnson protecting that port player? Well done. He's got the logistics worked out and he executes them perfectly. This is getting ridiculous. Getting. Cats by 122 points. It would seem no way now that this isn't going to be the most lopsided grand final in history. There's 96 points before back in 1988 and then the margin was only 50 odd at the last change so the well, melbourne fans will be happy meters, with that, won't they? 50 meters chad corns just dropped the footy siren cannot come quick enough for port adelaide poor tackle cats have kicked five two to nothing in the last quarter the crowd just posted at 97,302, and andrew mackey can join the veritable orgy of Geelong goal kickers. He drives through another. The Cats are in heaven.
Billy Brown, let's still look at the tears. So the funny guy, he's got a serious side to him. He's a marshmallow, isn't he, Billy? That shows, doesn't that show how much it means to all those blokes that went through so much pain? Football club, but uh, all bar Port supporters can enjoy Geelong's triumph. But now it's theirs. Brenton Sanderson already down for the box. Port oh. still goalless in this last quarter and a uh, fancy bit of footwork there. Sets up Sean Burgoyne, the goal unguarded, and that is a beautiful finish, it has to be said. But this is the heart of the action. The Geelong bench. Ken Hinckley in there. Brenton Sanderson, who was dropped from the team in 95 after playing in the two lead-up finals. So many who have so, known so much pain. Even the boots done there in the background, Brian Carr. From the top to the bottom, Geelong's day. And there is Bomber Thompson. Fantastic. Oh, how satisfying is that for Bomber Thompson? Fantastic. After what he went through last year, his position was under review. There's Frank Costa, Brian Cook. Who took over in 1999 when the club was $8 million in debt. There'll be a lot of people in Geelong who can die happy now. They've had the game won since uh, one minute into the third quarter. His fifth contested mark of the day, Brad Ottens. And there it is! It's the Cats! They've come so close so many times in the last 44 years, but the torture is finally over! Geelong are the